What our team specializes in is using econometrics to understand the effects of different policies around the world. So when hurricanes hit a country, what happens to the economy? That's a question we asked in the past. So we thought, actually, we can study the exponential growth of these infections the same way we normally study the exponential growth of the economy. And what we've done in the past is you can say, OK, a hurricane hits this economy. What does it do to economic growth? In this case, a policy hits the infection. What does it do to the spread of the infection? What we did is we went to six of the countries that were hit really early. So because they are almost like the guinea pigs, the canary in the coal mine, they were deploying policies in real time. And different countries were doing different things. So we went to these six different countries, China, South Korea, France, Italy, Iran, and the United States. And we asked sort of what policies are being deployed. Are they closing schools? Are they canceling events? Are they restricting travel, shutting down businesses, locking down the whole population? You know, what are they doing? Uh, and when are they doing it? And where are they doing it? And when they deploy these policies, does it change how the infection is spreading? There's no standard reporting system. And that's actually where our team really came in. So different people went and were reading all the news articles in China or reading all the news articles in France and literally creating a brand new database of over 1,700 different policies being deployed at the national level, at the state level, at the sort of county level or city level across these six different countries. And so these are all happening at different times. And assembling that data, which we can match to the infection data, was really the key to the study. And so what it lets you do is it lets you look at the infection growth over time. And then you can see what would have happened if we had no policies before the first policy kicks in. Then a policy kicks in, and we see the curve bends a little. Then another policy kicks in, and it bends a little more. And we can measure those changes, those, those bends in the curve, to understand how much each policy is slowing down infection growth. We can see the pain, the economic suffering that's happening in different communities. That's very salient. It's very tangible. You know, We see when we're, we're losing money. What we don't see is lives that are never lost, people that are never get sick, because we all took preventive action. And so what we aim to do with the study is to try and understand what were we getting in return for all of this very painful sacrifice that people are making. If we hadn't shut things down, there would have been I don't know, roughly 500 million more infections across just the six countries we're looking at. The world came together in that moment, and it worked. It really slowed down this virus. What we see is that you know, in many contexts, all of these actions coming together, we've achieved something that has never been achieved before. No, never in human history have so many lives been saved in such a short period of time. I don't think it's ever happened. And I think we all did that together. It's, it was a collective action on a global scale that, has, that I think people should feel really proud of.